It's Sunday, April 17th, 2016, and this is the Product Mentor Talk. Today we're joined by one of our mentors, Jen Bornstein, Senior Product Manager at Attract TV at TouchTunes Interactive Networks, to lead a talk today on key to product management success, building team morale. Um, allow me to briefly just explain the format for everyone today. Um, it be people you see in the bottom of your screen, and you might see people jumping in and out. Our mentors and mentees within the current program of the Product Mentor, and the Product Mentor program is a, is, a, is a program where we pair mentors and mentees up in the field of product management for a period of five to six months to make better product people and also better products. Um, so everyone on the bottom of the screen can kind of wave hi for a second there. Hello, there we go. Uh, half of them wove high, wait, wave high, wove high. There we go. Um, and so uh, we're going to quickly do some introductions in just a moment, but also throughout the talk, uh, as you want, if you want to ask questions, you can always go to theproductmentor.com/live and post your questions there, and I will feed them on to Jen uh, in semi real time. If they're the more generic product management questions, I always save those for the end of the talk uh, to not ruin too much of the pace of uh, the topic at hand. Uh, with that said, let me just go around the room, very quickly around the room, uh, with some introductions. So, Jen, if you could just briefly introduce yourself. So, hi, I'm Jen Bornstein, and I am the Senior Product Manager on our TV product uh, with TouchTunes Interactive, and I've been in digital since 2005. Excellent. And uh, to the, our next individual, Degat. Um, uh, head of product. At a company called uh, Elemental Path, we make uh, cognitive dinos. And prior to this job, uh, it's a tiny, like ten or twelve person startup, and a few of our people are remote. So this is something that's especially of interest to me because it's kind of hard to kind of corral people. Um, and before this, I primarily worked as a mechanical engineer, um, and in my last role, slash product manager at MakerBot and. Uh, endoscopy, aerospace, bunch of different jobs. So kind of transitioning into the product role, and I've kind of jumped in feet first because I'm the only product person in my company, and it's tiny, and no one knows what, what they're doing. So it's pretty interesting. But now That's an introduction. Thanks. <laughs> oh, a, lot, a lot of background there. Okay. Uh, I wonder how many are watching. Uh, so yeah. So with that said, uh, everybody, uh, at wherever you're watching us, you can always submit your questions in real time uh, to the live stream at theproductmentor.com/live. And I am Jeremy Horn, aka the Product Guy, and I'll be moderating here today. But with all that said, let me hand it over to Jen, so so we can learn more about this whole thing called team morale. Hi everyone. All right. So. Get started. So, all right. So, this is the product mentor, and we will be discussing maintaining team morale. And I'm going to be very focused today on remote collaborative teams. Um, Basically because anything that goes for a remote collaborative team is absolutely true for teams that are co-located. But remote collaborative teams present difficult situations. And if you can have good team morale, if you can have good collaboration remotely, uh, you could probably hit it out of the park with co-located teams. So this is me. Uh, Jen Bornstein, and currently I'm with TouchTunes Interactive, TouchTunes Touch Music. Um, I'm a senior product manager on their TouchTunes TV product, and one thing I like to call out is uh, locations. So I'm in their New York location. We also have locations in the Chicago area, as well as our development team is in Montreal, and then uh, we have a, a group in Oxford, England. Um, previously, uh, I worked with DirecTV, and uh, I was working out of their no New York location while the rest of my team was all in Los Angeles. And then, in, even before that, I was with the Nielsen Company as a, a general manager for a company called, for, for a, a site called Reward TV, and we had locations, it's Nielsen, so it's global, so we're talking about New York, Chicago, Oxford, Belgium, Singapore, and Bangalore. So that was, you can imagine, quite the situation. So calling on all of those remote, remote expertise is what I'm putting into this presentation today. 
So today's talking points. Um, let's review issues caused by remote teams. Um, let's identify tools that can help. Let's talk about the importance of FaceTime, because we know that when you're remote, you look, it's so easy to get out of sync. And what are the ways that we can all stay in sync even when we are far apart from each other? So digital tools that help us communicate better, feel more collaborative, feel more interactive. Um, getting together to have FaceTime, and then some must-remembers. This is a quote here, a virtual team, whether across the street or across the world, is a team whose members simultaneously work together to a common purpose while physically apart. So let's talk about a little bit about an ideal team. I mean, we all wish we were co-located, that everybody, product management, project management, development, design, QA, that we were all in the same place. And you can see from my little picture, there's the team, and they're jumping in the air together, and we've got a smiley face and a thumbs up, because this is the ideal situation. This is what we all wish we had. And it just makes things so much easier. Uh, you know, even if uh, it's a matter of, are you communicating in the right way? Um, you can you get a better sense of when people are off beat or not on the same page when you're in person. You can be like, well, what did you mean by that? Um, as opposed to when we are not all together. So for touch tunes, this is our situation right now. Uh, in New York, we've got product management and design, and then up in Montreal, we have uh, project management, our developers, and then our QA teams. And um, this is definitely way and above better, it's way better than when I was at DirecTV where I was in New York and uh, most of my team was in LA because what would happen is I would have already started my day at 9 o'clock and by the time they got in at noon um, you know I would have three hours of not having answers and then of course when it hit 6 o'clock uh, for me, to them, it was only 3 o'clock, and they would be like, well, well, why can't we have this meeting at 6 o'clock my time? Okay, guys, that's 9 o'clock my time. And while, you know, I don't mind doing it occasionally, when it starts to become a pattern, talk about a morale hit killer, you know. So I'm basically working from 9 to 9, and they don't think anything of it, where at the same time, it's slowly burning me out. So let's talk about some issues of remote teams. Uh, I love this comic here where you've got Batman and Robin, and Robin is like, this is not what I meant. Uh, Robin, this is not what I meant when I was talking about a Batmobile. It's so easy to <laughs> get out of step on day-to-day -day activities, and I often joke right now in my present position that you know when I'm working on requirements and I'm, I'm working with a development Team. My biggest fear is that I'm, you know, getting back a, a car with one wheel and no steering wheel doesn't mean that it's delivered. It doesn't work, so therefore it's not delivered. And if it's because we're not communicating, then we're not doing our jobs. Uh, it's harder to get to know one another. You know, when you work in the same office, there are rhythms that you develop. There are jokes. There are certain even ways of overhearing people. I've had situations where when I was co-located with a team member, we got along great. Um, we were constantly on the same page. We understood each other, but they ended up moving across the country to work remotely from home, and it just ruined our relationship. I was no longer too over, able to overhear the types of things that she wasn't volunteering uh, normally. Uh, in our communications, so we were getting more and more disconnected, um, and communication was just not something she was naturally good at, and we were it was harder to overcome once we weren't in the same space anymore. Um, and it's just easier to get disconnected on long-term goals. Uh, you know, you think, okay, well, we'll talk about it next week. There are none of those sort of impromptu conversations where. Uh, you have a, a you know a whiteboard marker and a whiteboard, and next thing you know, you're sort of brainstorming together because it happens naturally. That doesn't happen when you're co-located when you're not co-located because everything needs to be planned, and it's so easy to get so involved with and into the weeds with what's immediately right in front of you that you kind of forget about uh, the people who are not sitting next to you. Um, so impacts on morale. Uh, there's a lot of them, and I'm sure everybody uh, on this call has different ideas of impacts. But, f but just from my experience, what ends up happening is 
you, you feel like you work together, say you have a remote session, everyone's on the same page, and it, it even starts the day after you guys are not co-located anymore. You, you just feel like you, you end up feeling frustrated, uh, you feel like you're getting off sync with the other people, you feel disconnected, hopeless, you feel very alone, uh, you feel unsupported in some cases because somebody learns one thing and they don't pass on the information or maybe you have a great idea and you shoot out an email with this idea and you hear nothing back. You're like, um, okay, that was a really great idea. Did you hate it? Did you get it? What's going on? Um, you, you, you often feel confused because maybe there's an email chain going on that you are only part of for part of the chain and you're confused. Someone thinks you're on the same page. Oh, well, you know all about this. No, I don't. What are you talking about? Oh, well, there was an email chain going, well, I wasn't on that email chain. And eventually you start feeling like you're being set up for failure. Uh, you, you start feeling burnt out and, and you get tired of feeling like everything is a, is, is a fight. You're, um, you know, hey, wait a minute, don't forget about me. Uh, you know, I think you guys are missing some information here that I have that you don't have and you're going off in the wrong direction and it's a lot of effort to reel people go back and make sure, oh wait, I didn't know that. That way you're, you're saying that there are no resources or the resources we have are not good. And Oh, wait, why didn't you bring this up before? I did. I tried to. I emailed. I, I tweeted. I text. Uh, I guess I didn't get it to the right person. And everyone ends up frustrated. And it really impacts just how everyone works together. And the last thing you want is for people to feel all of these ways and end up just throwing their hands up in the air and thinking, well, it doesn't really matter anyway because we're just going to get out of step again and I never get my way or we're constantly making mistakes or everything is taking too long. So how can we make it work? How can we work together remotely? How can we work together and keep morale up and keep people excited and on the same page as each other? It's a really good question. So making it work. Step one, uh, let's utilize the um, right online tools. It's just a good first step. There are so many tools out there that support communication, they support organization, they support process, and they support collaboration. And while we are so close yet so far, it can really, really, really help. So online tools. There's a lot, and this is just grabbing a bunch that probably a lot of you are using. And you may love some of these, you may hate some of these. Um, I remember when I first got to TouchTunes, it was all about Jira all the time, combined with a little bit of Skype um, and some Join Me. That would have, uh, you know, be the best way. Maybe some Google Drive sometimes. And all of these things were very disconnected. So like you'd be in JIRA and then somebody would say, oh, okay, can you copy this to a wiki? Or, oh, can you share that with me? Okay, I'll go in Skype and then we can have a chat. It just felt like a lot of effort to get all of these pieces of communication, everything we needed every time we were trying to stay on the same page in the same place. And it was very, very frustrating. Uh, I think probably a lot of people who use JIRA can relate. So. End of last year, um, we all we the t a lot of the teams within TouchTunes we began ignore uh, you know exploring Slack and hopefully a lot of you at this point have started using Slack. For us, it just allowed us to create conversation channels uh, for pretty much every project that we were working on. You can see we've got everything from team meetings to uh, just various projects we're working on, ideas, um, reporting, just all of these things that we can have targeted conversations on. And what I love is you can upload code into this. You can upload, uh, you know, uh, you can sync up with other, uh, you get your documents up in there so that everyone can see. And then over here on the right hand side, you can pin things that are of, of import so that everybody can uh, make sure that they're on the same page. So what has done for us, it reduced our emails. I would say, you know, I used to be in a world where I had two to three hundred emails coming into my inbox a day. I mean, I still have a lot and I, it's still hard to keep up with. But that has definitely decreased by at least two-thirds. Um, the real-time communication is great. 
Um, you can monitor conversations that are going on that maybe don't necessarily have to do with you, but anytime anyone is speaking to you specifically, you can make sure that you say, hey, at Jen Bornstein, I need feedback from you, and you can make sure that that person they'll get a, uh, either an email message that says, hey, there's conversations going on where people are talking about you, but also if you download the app version to your Mac, you can see uh, down in the corner of your screen that there's one or two or three comments that are specifically trying to get your attention, and you know to go to Slack because somebody is talking about something that they want your input. Uh, project management. Uh, it's been very uh, helpful with us incorporating Trello, and I'll get more into that on the next slide. File management, uh, well, you can upload anything into Slack, and it makes it easier to find. Dropbox, uh, you can you know, even start a Google ha Hangout right from there. And it's provided an archive of all of our targeted conversations which has been majorly, you know, if you want to go back and say, okay, what, what was that conversation that we had back in May about uh, this feature, you can go back into it and say, okay, this is what we are talking about, and then here is the uh, file that we created together and we uploaded into Slack. It's really nice. Think about when you go back into emails and you're like, okay, I'm trying to find this email and this email is connected to this email. It's just so easy for things to get lost or be hard to find or just keep the chain going within if you're trying to organize everything in your archive in Outlook. So Slack so we, has had a, we had a question that just sure. came in. Okay. Um, and uh, let me hand it over uh, to, uh, to, get, to uh, ask it. Sure. Um, we currently use Slack, and it's mm -hmm. great. It has all the benefits that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, however, it's kind of hard, and we use Jira as well for mm -hmm. our planning our sprints and all that stuff. Um, are there some good tools or integrations you've found to help capture? There's a lot of good discussion that happens in Slack, but then people feel good afterwards, and then there's no like recording of action items or way to like. Translated. Sure. And yes. <laughs> so they're like, oh yeah, we had we discussed the issue and we think we have a solution and then. Yes, uh, definitely, and I'm about to get into that on the following slide because I do talk about all of the integration points that we had. So let me get back to that slide and then I can show you that. But yes, I agree with you. It can be if you. If you're not taking advantage of all of the integrations that Slack's, Slack offers, and there are so many, then right. you're not using the full robustness of the tool. So mm -hmm. let me go back to that slide, and we can specifically talk about the project management piece and how we can you can use it for maintaining next steps and sort of follow-ups. Great. That would be really helpful. Thanks. Awesome. Okay. Right. And that's all the questions we have right now. Uh, Jen, okay. take it away. All right. All right, so moving on to the next. So Slack was, has been the right tool for Touchtoons. The partnerships have allowed us to integrate um, all tools into this one big super tool. So before, like I said, we were using uh, Jira and then we were using Skype, all very separate. So with uh, Slack, we've integrated in Google Hangouts and you know the fact that you can be in the middle of a Slack conversation that's all text, which is all well and good, but sometimes you need that verbal, you need to be able to hash it out. And Google Hangouts, the fact that I can just sort of click and just right then and there be in a Google Hangout with the person that I've been slacking with has been awesome. So how, how else we've integrated in is we've integrated in Dropbox. So if you have any big files or any documentation, you you know, especially with us, there's a lot of video in my world. You just drop it into Dropbox, and once you just add that share link, it pulls the file into Slack to make it much more easy for people to say, oh, okay, I can just download this file, or even within Slack, you click on it, and if it's like a PowerPoint presentation or something like that, you can just go flip through it without even having to download it right then and there. And what's nice is it's like, as I mentioned before, it's archived there. So if you want to come back to it, very easy to find again. And if you pin it to the side of any sort of uh, Slack channel, again, that much easier to find. Um, GitHub, which allows you to incorporate 
code rela related project management. We've just started doing this, so it's fairly new to our team, but just the fact that we can keep an archive of code. Um, over the past year plus, we've had a lot of developers come in and out, and we're getting to the part, the, the part where we now have a full-time tech lead who wants a certain standard of coding, and the fact that he can create this project management hub of the code to make sure that any new developers know exactly how he wants everything done and they can access, access it right within Slack is going to be a huge uh, shift and a huge advan uh, advancement for the team. Um, now, this is how do you do better project management? How do you get those conversations that you have on Slack and how do you get those moving forward? That's where you bring in Trello. So Trello is basically a road mapping Kanban board, and however you want to use it, it's up to you. My team right now, we have specifically, you know, uh, backlog, doing, done type of channels uh, for, for all of the things, and you can assign them to people. So in some cases, we may have where there's like a product management doing channel versus a uh, dev doing channel and uh, you can move tickets or projects or features or whatever it is, next steps, from column to column to make sure everybody realizes what people are working on. So we found that very helpful within the team just to make sure uh, weekly we, we catch up with each other and we'll say, okay, what's everyone working on this week or what were they supposed to work on that last week? Why did it not happen? Um, it's been fine for us to do weekly, um, but on some occasions when we're really in the weeds, really in the trenches, heading into maybe a big exposition, we meet more often and we review the Trello board every single day. And just, you know, we all know, have being co-located, you have a Kanban board on the wall, what everybody's working on, moving your post-its from column to column, it's awesome. This is a digital way for us to do the same. We've used Trello for other things too, like uh, we have a Trello idea board where we have feature ideas, sort of like a backlog, and it has a voting capability. And so like if we're trying to figure out what we might want to work on next, allowing people to go in there and give it a thumbs up and explain why they think this is a high priority thing over something else, it's made people really feel like they have a voice that they did not have before. And we all know that when we don't feel we're heard, we don't feel we have a voice, whether it's within a team or within a company or organization, it's so easy to get frustrated and frustration leads to bad morale. So um, Trello is one of my new favorite things. And then here also additionally is you can incorporate in Google Drive. And I think all of us use Google Docs, Google Sheets, you know, Google, even Google Presentation. Um, recently, we were working on presentations for uh, uh, an upcoming green light, discussing features that we wanted to build and getting executive uh, and business buy-in. And the fact that I was able to work on uh, the presentation with my producer who is up in Montreal in real time, we could be working on the same slide at the same time. He's uh, you know, massaging the roadmap and I'm massaging the verbiage because English is not his first language, so for the fact that I could go in there and sort of tweak the way things are written out at the same time and it saves everything, it's been invaluable to keep us on the same page and keep things moving forward. Uh, and I have seen, you can see the picture on the right hand side, uh, we recently had a release on our team uh, where uh, a new experience was released into the field and we did a little um, Slack <laughs> group happy hour where we drank uh, some champagne to celebrate and we were sharing pictures and videos back and forth. And uh, I love the fact that I still have this picture in my Slack and every once in a while, you know, I go back and look at it and remember what a great day that was. All right, going beyond digital. So digital is well and good and it's a necessary part of our lives. We, uh, a lot of us are in digital and a lot of us are not co-located. So we've got to do what we've got to do. But as it says right here, silence isn't golden, it's deadly. So sometimes you need to make sure that you know what's not being said. And it's really hard to re read between the lines, read between the silences, when you never have FaceTime with people. So it needs to be part of everyone's plan. For me, it's about at least getting up to Montreal once a month, making sure that the team stays on the same page. Um, 
and getting that re real face time. So um, we're talking about office visits, uh, we're talking about making time for socialization, and we're talking about team activities of getting out of the office. And uh, this comic cracked me up because I, I, you know, it's just the fact that these two people are sitting here, they finally have FaceTime, but they're still on their computers. And this FaceTime is really about not being that way. It's about putting away the phones, putting away the computers, putting away all things digital, which we have come to rely on, and actually looking somebody in the eye and getting to know them. So let's talk about the benefit of office visits. Getting on the same page. We often think we're on the same page. We often delude ourselves and say we're on the same page. Um, but how are you really sure? How do you really, really know? Um, you don't always know. And it's really harder to lie to yourself and lie to one another when you're actually sitting across from one another. So if you want to make sure that you are indeed on the same page, share a space. Um, getting a better sense of what people are working on um, it's very easy, especially when you have, you know, product managers who are maybe working on requirements or documentations of what they want. Perhaps they're working on prototypes um, and, you know, wireframes and trying to get out of the office and get user feedback while at the same time you've got developers in a separate office coding the way these things are going to work. It's really easy to kind of lose track of what's being worked on. Um, I've had situations where a developer has gotten some, gotten an API before I've really finished, fleshed out exactly how I want this to function and because they have access to this API they were so excited and they started just sort of building out functionality and the reality of the situation is he kind of got to a point where he's like, well, I've already sort of built this. And I'm like, all right, well, what did you build? And he shows it to me, and this was in particular a sports feature. And he's like, well, I built it like this. I go, so you built this sports uh, chart that is showing, uh, you know, local, uh, you know, national sports events, uh, but it's, com it's mixing sports. So it was mixing like hockey with baseball and football all in one visual. And I'm like, this is a little confusing. He's like, well, it was an option within the API and I thought it was a better option. And I'm like, well, from a user perspective, it probably makes more sense for it to be, you know, all hockey or all baseball or all basketball so that you're, you know, if you're only looking at it for 15 seconds, your brain can process what you're actually looking at. So he ended up having to go back to the drawing board and, and go back in and change things, which I know is frustrating for him, frustrating for me, and, you know, it's about making sure that you know what people are working on and what they have a tendency to do. Like, once he gets his hand on an API, he's going to be in there trying to do something with it. So I know that about him, and it's very helpful as we continue to work together. Um, hashing out the hard stuff in person. Well, we all know that we get into disagreements or miscommunications, and it can be really easy to kind of ha have things that leave a bad taste in your mouth. There may be reasons why you've gotten off on a bad foot or um, are not on the sa same page. Is it easy to have these conversations over the phone or even over a hangout? It's, it's not. It's better to have them in person. Um, I have found that what you end up doing is really getting more out of this than just what this immediate thing was. It's about the fact that you're going to learn more about each other and it will help you in the future avoid these situations because you, you end up sort of laughing about it, you end up going, what is this really about? What, what, is, what, what is the cause of this? Or, or how did we get to this place? And I find honesty happens more in person than it does in over digital because it's just, you actually have a, a, a chemistry that you can feel one another. And it's harder to lie in person than it is over a, a, a digital means. I mean, that's why it's gotten so easy for people to text or email breakups or, you know, do a Snapchat breakup because it's so easy to do that and there's no emotion there. In person, you really take the time to say, this is what's really going on and, you know, I'm here because I care about how we got to this place. 
and then the opportunity to wor work on longer term vision and strategy. You know, everyone on your team most likely has amazing and great ideas, but they want to feel heard and they also want to understand what you're coming where you're coming from and in person is the only way. So, the benefits of getting out of the office. There are a lot of things you can do. You can see some pictures over here. Recently, my team rented a breather space up in Montreal. Um, we spent the whole day uh, just doing brainstorming, talking about what we thought was a successful product, how we could get to where we want to go, how will we make our users happy, what defines success, and it was a lot of fun. We had a really great time, and we, you know, it was nice to to just hear people who normally don't say very much. Some of our developers can be quiet, especially you know when they're used to stronger A personalities like project managers, pr uh, product managers, even tech leads. We're more alpha, more type A, more verbal, and it was really great to see some of our developers coming out of their shells. The, you know, the fact that they could write an idea on a post-it and then they got a chance to explain their ideas. We really got some great things out of them that we didn't know they had in there. And some of their ideas are now going to be things that are being prioritized to be worked on. And you can just see them. They have this aura about them uh, where they walk a little lighter and they have bigger smiles on their faces. And I've even had them start reaching out to me more uh, cold reach outs, like kind of like, hey, uh, you know, you like that idea I had in the session. I have this other idea that I think would be good too that it, I just thought of. And everyone is just throwing more things out there, throwing more concepts into our Slack idea channel. And then do a little group field research. So a lot of us have our products that are out there in the world. Um, at TouchTunes, um, we are a digital jukebox network where they, we have over 70,000 jukeboxes across the US and Canada. It, it, talking about them in theory is not the same thing as going to some of these venues, playing their music, talking to people, and doing this together is just really, it's a, it's a lot of fun, and at the same time, the developers, the product people, designers, UX people, we all bring a different perspective and it's only going to make the product that much better. So there are things you can do. You can check out your, uh, your products out in the field like I just mentioned. You can check out a competitor's product which uh, we've we've done that as well, and it's you know to, to kind of to say what's good about their product, what do you think uh, we're doing better, what are they doing better as a team, it, it gets the juices flowing. Um, attend a workshop together, so anything from process related, how to do our jobs better, to even in uh, New York we have the New York Music Tech Meetup, and you know for some for people within a music company to go to something like this to hear what the startups are, are dreaming up and how it could impact our product and do it together so that after we're done we, we grab a drink and we talk about what we just saw. It's just, it, it really, like I said, it gets the juices flowing and people create amazing things from just spending a little time walking outside the building. And then the last one is a breather space. So just getting them outside of their Montreal office where, in, or even outside of our New York office where people are constantly, oh, can you, ha can, can you give me five minutes? Can I just stick my head in? Oh, can I grab you for a second? When people know you're not physically there, they're not going to bother you in the same way as when they uh, know that you, you're, you're doing a workshop, but you're doing it in the conference room where I've bothered you before. It's, it's creating that distance and, you know, to have everyone's attention for a whole day, undivided, giving everyone specific breaks where you say, okay, you have, uh, everyone has 20 minutes, check your emails, we're gonna, but we're going to come back to this and, uh, you know, make sure that people know that we are still doing this. Um, it, was, it was just a great day. Making time for socialization. Um, you have to, look, there's a difference between friends and coworkers, absolutely. But you know, to have coworkers who are your friends, that you have commonalities, that you have shared experiences, it just makes t becoming a team easier. So getting to know everyone personally, you know, the fact that um, 
my product analyst moved here from Pakistan and that she has a fiance in Vegas, that my producer uh, has two kids and you know uh, loves going to Disney World with them. These things just help me work with them more. It, it finds commonalities. Um, you know, I love Disney too, and so the fact that that's something that he, we can talk about or even help each other out with when someone's planning a trip, it, it has, has really brought us together. Um, shared experiences bring everyone together. So you go through something with someone who, uh, you know, it, it, it brings stories. It, uh, it has something to laugh about. Um, most recently my team went to Philadelphia to check out some of our venues and that has been the source of many stories, catchphrases. We created the GIF from some of the videos we shot there and it's something that all of us sort of laughed and connect on in a way that we didn't do before we went there. It's, it's, it's another thing to bring people together and make them feel like they're part of something and not a whole bunch of people pulling in separate directions. And then group activities could also promote teamwork. So if you look down to some of my suggestions on the bottom, think about something like an escape room. So I know we have these in New York where basically a group of people are locked in a room and they have a, cert a set amount of time where everyone, ha you have to figure out how to break out of the room. You're going to learn a lot about each other in a short amount of time. Um, when I was at DirecTV, we uh, did a team scavenger hunt where everyone was broken up into about 10 different teams um, on the island of Catalina and we all had golf carts and we had to execute this scavenger hunt together and the first team back um, really, you know, they, of course there was some sort of prize, but the fact that everyone ended up in the same place and was tell were telling war stories about their experience, it not just bonded you with the four or five people who were on your golf cart doing this with you, but we were sharing pictures, we were, you know, we created a, a Facebook page, uh, we were doing real-time tweets, and so even revisiting those things six months later or a year later, it not just, yeah, it bonded small teams, but it also bo bonded the, the larger digital team within a company like DirecTV, and that's amazing. Um, and it doesn't have to be big things, yes, not everyone can go to Catalina to go on a scavenger hunt. But, you know, things like trivia nights, uh, bowling, and karaoke are things that you end up laughing, you end up with stories, you end up learning things about people that you didn't know. Some people may be really shy, but they may love to sing in front of a crowd, and that is just something interesting to know about somebody because it shows them an aspect of their personality that you could tap into because we're not all the same. You know, the worst thing you can do in life and as a, a leader is to treat everyone like you want to be treated. Um, it's a good starting ground, but what motivates people is different. And hopefully a lot of us have had management training where we have learned, okay, this is my motivator, but your motivator is something different. So I can't treat you as if you were me because then we will fail. Um, it's just... I like to harpen back to, to my days. I used to do theater, and um, as a director, I'm directing a play, and I have to deal with ten different actors who are in my play. You have the diva, you have the sort of the the the, uh, the the little engine that could, the one who's really really slow on the uptake, but in the end, they're going to deliver a great performance. But you have the people who need steering, you need the people who need to be left to their own devices, and you need to get to know every single person on your team and what drives them. Because if you don't, you'll, you may get there, you may get to the end of the journey, but you will not get there in the same way as if you get to know them personally. Um, if I treated every single person on my team, if I had treated every single actor in every play I was directing, and I had treated them exactly the same, I can't even imagine what the final results would have been. So it's about taking that time and things like this. It can be simple. Grab lunch. Grab dinner. Um, I had a coworker recently who who said, uh, you know, I, I feel like my team is disconnected, and we we said, you know, take them to lunch. And he's like, he came back and he's like, you're right. I, he's like, it, I feel like it's the start of something. So even something as simple as, you know. Uh, some Indian food shared can bring people together, or just grab a drink. Um, it's about making that time, and um, if you don't make that time, you're going to realize that your results are suffering. Um, so, 
in summary, uh, let's, uh, we can go back and we say, let's find tools that work for your team to keep them in easy contact. Let's make sure to visit and have FaceTime. Get out of the office uh, for collaborative time and socialize and get to know one another. And each one of these things, they're as important as the other. So it's always easy to start off. Get your digital tools in place. Find what works for your team. Um, make time to, to, to meet in person. It's very important and it's something that's really, really, really easy to say I'll do it next week or I'll do it next month or I'll do it in two months and it's very easy to fall away from it and your product will suffer. And you know, let people know that you actually care about getting to know them. It's, it is, it's time consuming and it is a lot of effort and it, it, can, it can be a, a little exhausting something, but your product will benefit from it if you get to know your people and you know what motivates them. A few things to always remember. Digital solutions can never replace actual conversation. So if you're, if you're on Slack and you're chatting away and you've been having the same conversation for 25 minutes, pick up the phone, get on a Google Hangout, don't draw this out, uh, you'll end up with miscommunication. Um, go with your gut. If something feels off, it probably is. Um, you know, recently I, I was uh, my product analyst. She was a, a person who's always been very uh, outgoing, very chatty, and I started noticing in our daily stand-ups she was becoming more and more quiet. And so I just mentioned something to my Montreal producer. Hey, you know what's going on with her? And he's like, Oh, I, I don't know, but you're you're usually pretty perceptive. I'm like, Yeah, someone should check in with her. She's 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 really quiet and. Uh, he, you know, he realized that she was having a problem with one of her coworkers, and you know, they he 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 uh, expressed to her that he recommend that it would be a really good idea that they sit down. And now those two people who were not getting along, who they, was impacting her performance and her morale, uh, they sat down and realized that they were both totally in left field. They totally were misinterpreting one another and now they have a great relationship but it was all because I just felt like something was off and I, I didn't just let it go. I said something. And uh, just make sure to pat yourselves on the back for accomplishments. People work really really hard and it's so easy to just forget to say thank you, to forget to celebrate, even digitally like my team did where we were on the Google Hangout, everybody was drinking champagne and we were celebrating the fact that we had just uh, did a big release. Take that time. Um, it's really important. It's, it's a very simple little thing but it makes a huge difference. But you can't ignore um, the, the things that um, maybe have gone wrong. So make a note of what you all want to improve together. Uh, do a post-mortem and you know everyone says we did this great and what should we do better and write these things down um, in Slack or in Trello or wherever works for you and you know in two weeks later for your next sprint take a look at them. Did you guys address them? Did were they assigned to somebody? How can you keep constantly looking for ways to improve? Because a team that constantly strives to do better, will do better. And that's it. So. Outstanding. Very cool. Very cool. Great talk. It's very great talk. <coughs> and thank you to our speaker, Jen Bornstein, Senior Product Manager at Attract TV at TouchTunes Interactive Networks uh, for today's discussion of the key to product management success, building team morale with remote teams. And as always, the presentation will be posted to our SlideShare channel afterwards. And also a big thank you from me, Jeremy Horn, the product guy, and to everyone else who joined us today and the product mentor. And don't forget, if you're interested in being a product mentor, like today's speaker, Jen, uh, to product people of all sorts all around the world, uh, visit theproductmentor.com and sign up today. Session st 6 starts January 8th. Um, and if you want to be a mentor, please sign up right away. Also, if you're looking to fill a new product job with a great product person, visit our very own free-for-all job board at theproductjobs.com. And with all that said, thanks, everybody, and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye. Bye.